Okay, now we're getting into equations and functions. First problem says write an equation of the function modeled in the table, then sketch a graph. The graph's right here, but first we've got to get the equation. Equation's the most important thing. So you got hours of climbing. At zero hours, the dude's 1,127 feet. At one hour, he's at this amount of feet, through two, this amount, three, this amount, and so forth. You need to write an equation that represents his feet. Now, to write an equation, you're going to make a line first, but you're not going to put equals y. You're going to put equals f, because f is usually where y is at. Now, we clearly see that f starts at 1,127. That's what the zero represents, 1,127. Then when we add, instead of multiplying it by writing times x, we're going to write times h. Now we've got to find out what the change is, what the rate of change is. So this is going 0, 1, 2, 3. So if it goes by 1s, increases by 1 every time, the rate of change is fairly easy to find. You start at the end of your table, 1,403, and you subtract the previous number, 1,311. So from here to here is a change of 92, positive 92, because it went up. Now I go to 1,311 and subtract 1,219. I got 92 again. Want to get guess what that is? 1219 minus 1127, 92. So the per hour is 90, or the per hour, yeah, rate is 92. So that's your equation. 1,127 plus 92 times H equals F. Now if you want to check and see if that's right, you can enter in the 1,127 and add 92 times, and then you can just pick a random H from your table, let's say 3. When I click equals, it should be 1,403, and it is. Now to graph, okay? This axis here represents your H, okay? And I didn't, that letter you can't see, so just put H right there. That's your hours. And this axis here is your feet, okay? Now you notice how the hours we go 0 by 1s, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 15. Now this feet right here, what I did was I started, I have 0 at the beginning, but I started at a number that was slightly lower than my lowest number on the table. So 1,127 is your lowest, so I started a little bit lower than that at 1,000. And then I knew I had to get to 1,403, so I used a scale of 100. That means I went up by 100 every time. Okay. Now that was my choice. It doesn't have to be done that way. That's just what I chose. I said, okay, that's your lowest number, so 1,000 would be a good place to start at. I have to get to 1,403, so I'll go up by 100s. Now, I could have went up by 50s. I could have went up by 200s. I just picked my scale as 100. That was just my creation. So, 0, 1, 1, 2, 7. So, I stay at 0, okay? 0 on the x, and 1, 1, 2, 7 is between these two right here. 1, 1,219, so I go to 1, and 1,219 is between the 1,200 and the 300, closer to the 1,200. 2, 1,311, so I go to 2, 1,311, somewhere in there. And then 3, 1,403. So slightly above that. Notice how they go in a straight line. Now I need to decide whether we need to connect the coordinates that we made. These are coordinates, not dots. Okay. Now for your in this column here, pick a decimal number, one and two. Let's pick 1.5 hours. Can you have 1.5 hours? Yeah, I can have one and a half hours. So put a check mark and that means you're going to connect the lines and keep going. Okay. So arrow right there. And the arrow is because it keeps going. Now, what's the purpose of a graph? Well, the purpose of a graph is it predicts the future. So if you have like seven hours, you're going to be at about 1,800 feet. Okay. If 
you have nine hours, I'd be at about 2,000 feet. Okay, that's kind of the purpose of it. <clears throat> okay, next problem. Cans and the bill it's going to cost. So I write my equation. Remember, not equals Y, we go equals B. So B starts at $52.07 plus, and instead of times X, we're going to write times C. Now what's the rate of change? Well, the C goes by 1, so then I come over here and find the rate of change. Every 1 can. So I start at the end, 55.94, and I subtract the previous number, 54.65, 129. Then I go 54.65, and I subtract the previous number, 53.36. Then 53.36, and I subtract 52.07, 1.29. So the rate of change is $1.29 every one can per can. So my equation, 52.07 plus 1.29 times C equals B. Again, if you want to verify if that's right, you go 52.07 plus 1.29 times Pick a C value, let's pick 2, 54.65. Okay, now on my graph, this is B, and then the, the, this axis here, the horizontal axis, is your C. So, 0 through 3, okay, I went by 1s. Now, the scale here, 0, my lowest number was 52.07, so I started at a nice, easy, lower number than that, 50. And then my scale, I used 1 because I knew all I had to get was 59.94. So I was able to reach that using a scale of 1. Okay, so 0, 52.07, so that's right above the 52. 1, 53.36, so 1, 50, it's between 53 and 54, closer to 53. Whoops, my bad, I'm on the wrong one. Okay, this shouldn't be here, sorry. 254.65, so 54.65, 3, 55.94, so it's really close to $56. Now, should I connect these? Well, let's put 1.5 again. Can you buy 1.5 cans of soup at a store? No, you can't. So cross that out. That means do not connect them. That's known as a discrete graph. The first one we made is known as a continuous graph. Okay, miles and gallons. So notice how this doesn't increase by one every time. We have to account for that later on. So equals G. So G starts at 11.2. And it's times M. Now, I know the M goes, doesn't go by 1s every time. It jumps by 17. I will deal with that later. So I come over here and find what G changes by. So I go 8.2 minus 9.2. That's negative 1. Because from here to here, it goes down 1. So 9.2 minus 10.2, negative 1. 10.2 minus 11.2, negative 1. Now you got negative 1, but this doesn't go by 1s like the first two did. So you're going to need to divide this by what this goes by. So 51 minus 34, 17. 34 minus 17, 17, and 17. So it's negative 1 divided by 17. That means this goes down 1 every time this goes by 17. So he was just one on the last one, so I was good, okay? So you didn't have to divide on the first two because it, it would have been just dividing by one, which is pointless, okay? So I write my equation, 11.2 plus negative. Now divide this real quick. Okay, I don't like that as a decimal, so I second PRB it back into a fraction. So negative 1 17th times M equals G. If you're going to verify that, you go 11.2 plus negative 1 ABC 17 times, and then I pick one of my M values, I'll go 34. 
when I click equals, the output should be 9.2, which it is. Okay, so this is gallons. This is M. You can put M or miles. So, now on the miles, I went by 5 so that I could get to 51. Now on the gallons, okay, I knew 8.2 is the lowest, so I started at an 8, okay, and then I used 1 as my scale because I just have to get to 11.2. So 0, 11.2, that's between 11 and 12. 17, 10.2, so 17, 10.2. Between 15 and 20. 34, 9.2. So 34 would be here. 9.2 just be right above the 9. 51, 8.2. So 51 right here. 8.2 is right above the 8. Now those go down. Do we have to connect these? Well, let's pick a random decimal number. Let's pick 17.5. Can you travel 17.5 or 17 and a half miles? Yes, you can. So we need to connect those. But we're not going to make an arrow. We just go, or you can make an arrow. That's fine. Just like that. Okay. Now, you notice how all those points went in a straight line. That's because the table, there was a common difference every time. Now, you're not graphing these. You're just going to tell whether if I graph these points, it would be a straight line or not whether it's linear or nonlinear. That's easy to tell. You go 0, 1, 2, 3 here. That's easy. Does this go by the same amount every time? Well, 9 minus 6 is 3. 6 minus 3 is 3. 3 minus 0 is 3. They do, so that's linear. Down here, 5 minus 0 is 5. 0 minus negative 3 is actually 3. Okay. So we know that's nonlinear because the difference isn't common. Here the common difference was 3. Here there is no common difference, so that's nonlinear. Okay, then here, well, 5 minus 5 is no change at all. It's 0, 0, and 0, so that's linear. It's the same difference every time. So every time it's a common difference, it's linear.